All right, welcome back everybody to another episode of the Alternative Cycling Network, where we give you unfiltered and unsponsored hot takes on the bike industry. And I am Russ, one of your co-hosts. And uh, this week, again, joined with uh, Michael from Locked In, and someone is missing. Where's Eric? <laughs> <laughs> Eric has been fired. So we're actually yes. going to do a... Uh, <laughs> Taking like, applications this week. Yeah, it's going to be like the, the <laughs> next American Idol, but to be a presenter. <laughs> So if you want to be the next presenter on ACN, uh, DM us uh, a short video <laughs> telling us why and a video of you welding something to your bike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, preferably lawn <laughs> furniture to a bicycle. Yes. <laughs> uh, just Eric is joining us. He's got a he's pulling a night shift today. So I think he's probably racing home from work and we'll see him at the uh, closer to the middle to the end of the show. But this week. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about a bunch of new bike drops, but also have it focused a lot on you guys. So Q&A, this is heavy on the Q&A, so be sure to ask your questions. But before we do that, let's do a, a super quick channel update. What's been going on in your channel, Michael? Uh, well, a lot of stuff, because obviously we had a week off. Uh, so yeah. I've had a lot of videos come out, and I'm probably missing a few, but I'll I actually have it pulled up just for reference. Uh, <laughs> so I had a DIY Duro video. I did a vlog on how that went. I had two subscribers come out. It was really fun. Uh, I did a video and review on the Sensa slash State Bike uh, group set, as well as my full review for the Poseidon uh, Redwood. I did a comparison video as well for the Redwood versus the X because I got a ton of questions on you know which is right for you. Um, so I went over the sim limit. Uh, you had a PowerPoint that was very fancy. Yes, I had a PowerPoint. <laughs> very official. Very. Uh, have, have, I always pronounce his name wrong. Uh, Habini. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, I took, I took a, a, yeah, I did a not a 45 minute like rant fest. Mine was definitely like PG compared to his as far right. as like word less choice, swearing. <laughs> uh, less swearing, uh, no drawing on the PowerPoint with like, you know, caricatures or anything like that. But uh, right. shout out to him <laughs> because I took one page out of his playbook. Uh, so I did a comparison and contrasting of both those bikes as well as a uh, video on how to set up your redshift uh, uh, suspension seat post properly because me and my buddy Mario have been riding that bike when you've been adjusting it. And I finally looked at the numbers of how that saddle should be a somewhat adjusted to your fit and kind of what things to do to adjust the height and the fore and aft, because it isn't obviously rigid and it sags slightly like mountain bike suspension. Mm -hmm. um, so I went over some numbers on general guidelines. If you do have that seat post of kind of things to do so that ideally you're more comfortable right out the gate. And then as of to, uh, today, I put out a Garbrook a derailleur cage review. And tomorrow I have a video that's launching about the crash I had last Saturday. I'm not <laughs> in a sling currently, but I re dislocated and fractured my shoulder oh, and no. learned some things, uh, learned some things about that. Uh, bruise my hip or have a contusion or something. Doctors aren't really sure. So right. I'm walking around with like a walker right now. It's great. Uh, oh, so I learned some things from that. Um, you, you learned that insurance in the U.S. sucks. <laughs> uh, yes, because uh, I'm a full-time YouTuber and YouTube does right. not offer coverage. So uh, if anyone wants to help out, I did launch my Spreadshirt stuff with all my new Slow But Look Pro t-shirts. Right. So uh, <laughs> maybe Russell put that in the description, but uh, please go watch my videos and you can see how cool they look. Right. Yeah. You, should, you could do a, a Slow But Injured. <laughs> yeah, Slow But Injured. Yeah, if I sell like... 5,000 of those. I think I can cover the bill that I have from, yeah, the the hospital. But yeah, here, that's uh, that's been my uh, life the last two weeks. Oh, geez. Yeah. Like, uh, well, glad that you're alive. <laughs> hey, well, yeah, there's, there's one positive in this. Yeah, yes. Mostly alive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, on Pathless Peld, we celebrated our one or video 1000. Uh, cool. We did it as a live stream. And man, that is a lot of freaking videos to do a thousand videos. Um, Prior to that, uh, what did we do? I, I I did a video on uh, recommendations for fall cycling gear, which came out today. Reviewed the Poseidon and also uh, Poseidon Redwood and compared it with the state uh, all road. So two kind of sub uh, $900 bikes back to back. And I'm sure I did other things. Uh, just a, a lot of content. I know when uh, it's when it's two weeks, you have to. I had to pull it up. I literally was yeah. like, I don't remember. There's I don't know. Things. There was like six, <laughs> there were six videos. It's yeah. a lot. I have to say, once you posted the uh, the premiere for the thousand video, I was like, man, what am I at? And I like <laughs> went back and had to like count. I think I'm at like 
I had to repost a lot because of the the name change. So I had to like kind of do some maths. Uh, <laughs> but I think I'm around 350 to 400, I think roughly. Okay, so yeah, you're, you're still you're still a yearling. You got, you got yeah, some time. yeah, yeah. I was like, well, yeah, that, that year or so I took off in between the repost. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, no, I, it's uh. <laughs> I was just curious. I, I, I thought I was like, Oh, I gotta be close to five, at least. Right. Five. <laughs> you know, it, it feels like that long in YouTube years, but uh, yeah. yeah, that was super cool that, yeah, you've done a thousand. That's insane. Yeah. It's nuts. Like I thought I would be at a hundred thousand subscribers at, at well before the thousand mark, but I mean, okay. we all, we all grow at different rates. So yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to dwell on it. <laughs> Are you going to do the, uh, what the, I've seen a lot of it this last like month, the, uh, react to your first video. Uh, we did, we did something similar to that okay. on the live stream. The, I, I didn't get to watch all of it. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe when funny. we do the, when, when we get to hundred thousand, we'll do another little retrospective. Um, all right. So we haven't done this in a while, but I thought we would do, uh, some kind of reader submissions. Okay. Uh, if you're curious to, to submit things for us to, to share with the rest of the interwebs, do it via Instagram people. It's, it's 2020. Just DM us. It's okay. <laughs> Slide uh, in. <laughs> This one is from uh, Kurt Kirkrenick, and he submitted this. Um, bike yeah. balls. <laughs> those are still around? Uh, Man, I remember those for a long time ago. They're around and they're glowing. So, uh. yeah, uh, his message specifically was, thought this might make a good discussion topic in the show. I don't know. I don't know how much there is to discuss. They're just bike balls. <laughs> yeah, it's just bike balls. Yeah, I mean, there's you can get the safety pizza or the bike balls. I mean, right. it's like you're, you're in one camp or the other. It's That's yeah, true. it's it's either one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, in terms of bicycles, <laughs> uh, Bella man friend Michael here submitted this one. 1990 Diamondback Apex. Uh, <laughs> this is his ugly lock it up Dantan beater bike in Portland. You need one of these when you live in Portland, otherwise it's gonna get jacked. Uh, dead flat bars, increasingly uncomfortable. So you got a free abandoned set of Nash bar butterfly trekking bars. Oh, I remember uh, those. Oh yeah, there it is, yep. All I have to say is, is there any other kind of trekking bar other than free and abandoned? <laughs> oh my God. And and with the bar ends, like as like the arrow, like bullhorn section, oh, yeah. that's great, that's yeah, amazing. This is this is super, I mean, Velo Orange has their crazy bar. This has to be yeah. the maximum insanity bar. But the, the thing, I love how his lockup bike, and this is I. This is mad respect to him. <laughs> like his fender matches his down tube, like the logo. Coloring, <laughs> yeah. the logo color perfectly. And this is like your lockup bike, it mad Portland. respect. It's Portland. No, I know, know. <laughs> but I'm just saying like, if like this is like, I would do the same thing, but I'd be so scared to be like, oh no, they see it's color match. So they think it's nice. Right. But I love it. It's great. Like the bars throw them off with the basket and the toe yeah. strap or whatever that is from your car. Like it's great. Yeah. It's nice until they see the trekking bars and they're like, I'm right. not touching that. Oh, <laughs> this, guy, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever, ever used a trekking bar? I always get asked, you know, since we did a lot of touring, they're like, why don't you ever make videos about trekking bars? I'm like, well, because they're Look at I've, <laughs> I, yeah, so I had an old bike mechanic from performance that had, I don't know what they're called. Russ, you probably might know. It's like the drop bar version where mm. like the bottom is like swept in right, right, like, yeah. at the very end. And I don't know what they were called, but he, he made a, uh, if he is watching this thad, uh, I know you're still, a I'm pretty sure you're still a mechanic somewhere, but, uh, <laughs> He he had those bars and I was like, what the hell are those things? And but he he was a monster on a bike and he just had a bunch of crazy bikes from over the years of, of being a bike mechanic. And yeah, I just remember those and I don't remember what he got them off of, but yeah, they were they were similar to this, but like a drop bar version. Right. Super strange. Uh you know, yeah. but it was just like you know, weird 80s, 90s things that they just made. Yeah, I th I mean these are I think still fairly popular. Like I see a lot of German bike tourists use these. I mean, I think they're mm -hmm. more popular in Europe. Okay. I mean, for me, it's a lot of hand position, and most of them are terrible. So, like, I, <laughs> I but like, yeah, what's the what's the U in the front for? Like, you're not going to grab onto that. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's yeah. kind of like a arrow, and then yeah, and then the, this I get thing. I get the side because it's like having the bar ends. Like, I get that. Yeah, and then but the the, I, I don't want I don't want any of those. I, I want something <laughs> like that, that, that sweeps back, if anything. <laughs> so it's like, yes, you get a lot lot of hand positions, but they're all terrible. Is, is yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. 
so that is, I think, it for uh, viewer submissions. Let's move on to uh, the new new. So there's a lot of new bike drops this week. Um, a lot of tons of stuff this last like two weeks, yeah. Yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll chit chat about it. But if you guys have any questions uh, or comments about the, the specific things that we're showing, definitely let us know in the comments section and we'll call it out. And also, you know, just let us know where, where you're watching from. It's always good to see uh, where people are watching. So switch it back to the screen here. Uh, the first one is this guy. So we yep. both reviewed the the steel bike, the steel, steel version. Yep. Yep. And now they just dropped this 6061 black label all road. Uh, yep. 650B, 700C aluminum, mm -hmm. uh, carbon fork. So definitely a little bit more upmarket. A lot lighter. Uh, yep. Weight wise, I looked at the numbers. This in a medium, which is the size I rode, they're saying in the 700, I want to say it was like 21 and something. Oh, really? Dang. Yeah. Like, like, and that's with, okay, and not like not to talk any shit at all <laughs> on this bike, like those wheels and that crank set is not in the like even middle of the road weight category. So right. to hit that weight is ridiculous. One, yeah. those tires are not like they're great tires, but they're not like super light either. So yeah. like this with like, I mean, at stock is amazing for that weight category. Do I you mean, know what that's the, what they're selling this for. I've, uh, 1399, I believe with okay. just one wheel set. Uh, yeah. so I, I want, it might be 1349, but I think it's 1399 and they're doing the same 350 upgrade or, uh, they're doing the same $350 second wheel set purchase. So you get the same rear cassette rotors and rims with the other tire set. Um, so for this bike, it is different than the, the steel version. So the steel version came with the Vittoria Barzo. 2.1s like trail tires. There are a lot, lot of tire, a <laughs> lot, a lot of meat, a lot of meat, and a real aggressive tread. This yeah. is going to be a Vittoria Torino dry mm -hmm. in the 650 by 47 uh, for the 650, and then they're going to have the same tire in the 700 by 38, which is the same tire they offer in the steel version in the 700. So they went slicker for this bike. Um, the geometry seems very similar. It's a little bit lower in the front, but not by much from what I could see. And I, I could be wrong on that by how much, but yeah. it's, uh, so it it's, looks like yeah. they, they shortened the, the rear. Cause like the, yeah. the all red was what was it? 450 or 440? I think it's, I think it's 440 from what I remember. Okay. Yeah, so it was it's a little pretty bit long. So this is, I mean, I feel like this would be a, I feel like five. I mean, if you ride bikes, you could tell 435 yeah. is yeah. a little bit more all rounder. Yeah. Uh, still not like road bike short. Right. Um, right. Yeah, so this is going to be, this is still, and I believe if you look at their frame set, pull up their frame set page, um, I think the max tire clearance for this one was a 700 by 45, and I want to say they said 650 by 50, but I think in their frame set uh, description, I believe it said up to a 2.1 or 2.2 tire, which is okay. bigger than a 50, yeah. so I, I, I could be wrong, that could be either a typo or maybe, you know, because 50 millimeters doesn't equal 2.2. 50 millimeters is under that. So right. I'd say this is going to be, yeah, you're, you're slightly lighter, more performance oriented to where most people, yeah, a 50 C 650 is going to be all they'd want. You know, you see all the guys that are, or girls that are really like aggressive and well-skilled racers. They're yeah. on 700 by forties, like on things that I'm like, Oh no, you can't get a 2.2 .2 on there. Like, yeah. Oh no, no fam. I'm good. Like, yeah. So it's definitely that, but I think, uh, I think one, one thing that's cool about this is that they're, they've got this monster fork option, mm. uh, that you can, that is cool. It's 179 have, bucks. Yeah. And that gives you, it's still carbon, but, but three pack mounts. Right. So that's going to be a, a separate option. If you want to add it to, uh, any bike essentially. Yeah. So, and then if you want to upgrade the current bike, you can option that. And then the group set is going to be all apex okay. mechanical, uh, with still their state branded crank, which we both rode it's external bottom bracket, you know, external bearing. Like it's actually really nice. And it's not, uh, it's not like an exotic BCD or anything. Like you could probably, find no, it's it. a, it's a, it's a 110. It's a 110. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it, you can go down to a 34, um, I did check. I never mentioned this in a review. I think I forgot. So anybody who likes direct mount, 
I did pull off the crank set to see if the direct mount on the back is the same as SRAM, and it is not. Mm -hmm. uh, it is something I couldn't recognize it. All right. So that might be a Sensa specific bolt pattern, yeah. uh, but you can at least go down to a 34 with the 110 BCD, uh, you know, anytime. Yeah. It's that's an easy standard thing. So I think what what's interesting about this bike is, a uh, you know, clearly a little bit more than the the steel version. It's trying right. to play in the same kind of ballpark as a as a Surly. You know, a little bit more competitive, uh, right. a little bit more upmarket, but but lighter weight. So that's it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, internal cable routing. Yeah, um, I like the color. You know, yeah, oh, the, the, the color, yeah. Like whoever, whoever does like the design in, at state is very like restrained, at least on, mm -hmm. on this bike, and, and they do it really tastefully. Yeah, so. they they did the. Uh, it's the pigeon gray is the same from this steel model and the aluminum, uh, and then they did the copper was the new colorway for this. So I I I did see a video of this. Yeah, little, little, little exclusive video from Medi that he sent me. I was like, "Ooh, that looks good." Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it looks it looks really nice. Everybody's loving the copper, and that's what sold out. I think as of like an hour ago, State posted they had one pigeon gray in size. I think small, right? And like a large. I, I don't know. They had like two left <laughs> in the completes. Like as of like an hour ago, so they're probably gone. Yeah. So if, yeah. if anybody watching this is probably only frame sets, if that, and probably yeah. not medium. Yeah. So yeah, this I mean, if you really get one, like this is the color to get, I think, I yeah. think. Um, yeah. So I, it's, it's, they've been, I think they sold out li literally basically 24 hours. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they've got a, sh a very short, uh, video. Let's, let's cue it up just for shits and giggles. Yeah. Um, so this is obviously that's, that's Russ. That's me. Uh, Eric's <laughs> in the front. Yeah. We're, we're putting yeah. down the Watts. Yeah, you can uh, see how I like well, well, how look how good we look shaved. That's I think that's what it is. It's the shaved legs. You can't you can't recognize us. So one, that's what it is. One thing I do like one little minor detail is if you look at the tires, if you could play this in slow mo, you can tell that they are running them at at suppler pressures. There's a lot of like deflection. In oh the yeah. Tire. Oh. Uh, like look yeah. at that. It's at like, you know, they they set their tire pressures up right. Is is all I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> They've obviously watched the channels. Obviously. Right. Yeah. They yes. they know not to set it at like 60 psi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so cool. Well, that's, that's pretty exciting. Um, I don't know. Hopefully we'll, we'll all get a chance to, to throw a leg over one, but yeah, you know, once, uh, yeah, once the, uh, they'll, they'll probably be gray. gray. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't even care what the color is. I just hope we can get one. Cause like, I'm, I'm happy for him. I even told Medi like, as soon as I saw the announcement, I was like, are ours on the way? Cause like, I know if we don't get one right now. They're going to be gone. And so, right, yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I think that's, it's super cool for them. They're doing big moves. Um, I'm happy for them. And I think, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it looks killer. Um, I, I do wish it had the, the top tube and down tube mounts. It doesn't seem to, uh, yeah, it doesn't but look like it has any uh, rack mounts in the, in the rear. I'm not uh, a huge rack guy, so that doesn't bother me a whole lot, but mainly for me, it's top tube and down tube mounts. But, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, again, it's, it is more, racy and lighter weight than the the steel so i get one and make the differentiating factors right. i do love that they offer the monster fork option yeah that i think is going to add the utility back to this for somebody who wants that dual purpose yeah i like the how, how they form the tube here i mean i love yeah. how it gets super it just looks fast yeah you know? oh yeah it looks, it yeah. looks like it's moving so fast it's it's like melting the the metal away yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happens whenever we ride review bikes they get skinnier in the back right yeah yeah but I bet this was this probably does have have a function like in terms of softening it up a little bit, maybe oh, for sure. you know, instead yeah. of doing like one big honking Cannondale size tube all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the... <laughs> uh Cannondale. Okay. Um so the next bike, not Cannondale, is this one. Uh Lightspeed. They're doing a, a, a pre-sale on the Wadia. That, sure, that's the Wadia. Yeah. Watopia. <laughs> Watopia, there it is. Yeah. The Zwift bike. The Zwift bike. It's actually yeah. virtual. You can, you yes. Just, three grand and they send you uh, some Yeah, and you download, you download your avatar for Zwift <laughs> for $3,000. It's fine. Uh, so, what is this bike? It's a, a gravelish bike. Um, trying to zoom in here. Uh, it's all spec'd out with SRAM or SRAM, Shimano which is an interesting choice. Usually you see more SRAM, I feel like. Uh, oh, here it goes. The 
the wad chew, <laughs> which is totally not uh, how it was. I think it is what it looks like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Any of our, you know, scholars that are in the chat right now, if you want to phonetically like type out how to say this correctly, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so Ty, um, you know, it looks like a a gravel bike. It, it looks like Lightspeed's version of a gravel bike. I mean, it makes sense. It's not ultra progressive. It's still relatively safe. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that that customer, you know, it kind of makes sense. Um, I think the more brands that embrace it are going to kind of, again, shovel those niches or those segments like yeah. more, because I think a lot of like your fireflies, your light speeds, your moots, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have a lot of control over do, you know, they're a very small production, so they could make the, the weird stuff like moots has their, uh, their soft tail, you know, like that's super crazy for like any right. other brand, but they can do it. And, and they, they also said, charge right. a lot more. Like I feel like, well, yeah, it's all the order. It's like so, yeah. a, a complete tie bike, right? You know, Twenty nine hundred bucks is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. Like Lightspeed does have the in the tie segment, the value proposition. So I think mm -hmm. it makes more sense to be a little bit more kind of middle of the road, um, in my eyes, because they are a lot more affordable compared to the other options that are out there. Yeah, I think this is interesting. Uh, they're also offering a fork version with a rack and fender mounts. So it's, it's kind of right. nice to see that they don't totally throw utility under the bus. Um, I mean, the one spec I was kind of bummed about is that to get the threaded T47, mm -hmm. you have to pay, otherwise it's press fit. Um, right. Yeah. Because some, some guys got to sit there and, you know, spend 30 <laughs> minutes, you know, tapping it. Yeah. It's a, right. it's I mean, I, a... like for me, if I were to get this, I'd for sure get the, the threaded. Oh, right. Oh yeah. I, th I think that's <laughs> the fact that the fact that like an S works <laughs> like diverge is coming with a threaded bottom bracket. Like you think that would just be like a thing now, like right. once, once your $10,000 specialized is like even the, I think that even the new stunt jumper and the Epic are threaded bottom bracket. Like, yeah, there's no reason for anybody else. Like once like the big brands are doing that. Right. So I don't know, maybe that, that might be where they're economizing because, you know, once you yeah. do pay for the, the T47, would I say that's like 250 You know, you're <laughs> over... So money. I would, if anybody <laughs> gets this frame, I'll do it for 150 So, <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> like, just send me your bike. I'll, I'll, I'll buy the tool. It's fine. Yeah. So Lightspeed, uh, me in the U.S. and Tennessee, uh, mm -hmm. gravel bike. It's, you know, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so then there's this thing. This is a new-ish cassette by E13, the Helix R. Uh, world's widest 1X for 11 or 12 speeds. Uh, so what's special here? So got this, yeah, this was, uh, I have their E13 cassettes. I've had their 946 and 11. Um, I run currently their 942 for my like road setup for my one by. Mm -hmm. So the Helix mainly for everybody who's really interested, the two big factors are it's lighter than the current gen stuff by like 30 to 80 grams. Mm -hmm. And you can get a colored like big climbing gear, which is like the, you know, <laughs> that, that matters to people. Well, the big thing for, for a lot of people, really, I, I feel like it's a, a little, uh, Garbaruk ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. No, totally. Aesthetically. Yes. Uh, the big thing for theirs is because they offer the nine tooth, all of their cassettes have a nine and I did a big video on like breaking down the, how to simplify gear inches and what it means. But for somebody who hasn't seen that basically going from an 11 to a nine tooth bottom cassette. Yes. You have to have an XD hub drive body, but that essentially adds six teeth to your front ring. Mm -hmm. So that means that you can run six teeth smaller in the front, have the same top speed that you have and have that much more climbing gear. Right. Their initial cassette was a 946 compared to the 1050 SRAM cassette. Even though it's a 946, it actually has more range and it didn't drop your derailleur as low to the ground for potential impact. That was what they initially did. So yeah. now they make an 11 speed 946 and lower for like road one by setups. For 12 speed, they make a 946 and a 950. The right. 950 obviously has more range than your 1050 and the price point I think is a little bit cheaper and it's either similar or lighter weight. Yeah. Um, 
I've liked their cassettes. They shift really good. They last a long time. And because they're somewhat modular, you can just buy like the lower half or the upper half if you need to replace like worn out cog sets. So cool. it does like it, it is more economical in the long run. Yeah. I would, wasn't really giving these cassettes too much thought just because I, I hate the idea of having to swap uh, uh, to XD. But I've See, got all the, my bikes are XD. That's why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mostly because like uh, we've like on our personal bikes, like the hubs are like white industry hubs and the XD driver is mm -hmm. kind of expensive and the pain in the butt. But for like the D, I've got a DT Swiss wheel set that I'm reviewing and the 350, you just pull it out. It's like all yeah. toolless. Uh, yeah. So I might, you know, might mess the, around the with white, the, the, yeah, I have an industry nine hub. Um, if anybody gets industry nine wheels and you think you want to go XD, uh, go XD, uh, <laughs> the through, through axle end caps and the hub body. No joke. $275. What? <laughs> Holy I'm, not I'm not joking. And it wasn't ceramic variants. It was just the hub body tax and like the end caps because I had them quick release. So it was a, yeah. it was a, yeah. it was around the Marco. So going from quick release to through axle and Shimano to XD, it was like over 200 and something dollars. It was wow. ridiculous. That's, that's like a new hub. That's, that's oh, like no. a, and even that's the DT Swiss hub right there. <laughs> the, the, the sad part was even the bike shop guys were like, <laughs> Bro, I didn't even know they were gonna be that much. Like, cause I was just like, oh, just order them. They can't be that ridiculous. And I saw some price points online. I was like, ah, yeah. just give me something similar. But no one had them, yeah. so I just I found a shop that could source them for me. Right. And they were like, sorry, dude. I was like, for what? And they're like, it's gonna be like two hundred and whatever dollars. I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, turning around. He's like, he's like, honestly, like I almost called you, but they were already here, so like I can't return them. But like I felt bad. Like right. he gave me a little bit of a deal. <laughs> Yeah. like to help me out. Cause they, they even felt bad that they were like, these are, this must be like the nicest free hub of all time. Cause it was it like a hundred something dollars. Yeah. Dang. It was precious metals. I don't even know, but yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> all right. So that is uh E13 new cassette. Uh, let's see, where should we go next? Let's uh, just go down order. Uh, Envy coming out with some gravel. Well, not gravel. They're, they're no. all road uh all road components are now the new gravel specific components so this true. is this I gotta, is gotta make a whole new run of stickers yep, gotta, <laughs> no no whole new company whole new company <laughs> all new, whole new brain all road specific yeah, yeah. <laughs> all road specific yeah um uh, so let's see what's special about these uh they're lightweight they got some flare they got some drop uh there's some internal routing going it's on just their, yeah it's just their arrow bar with like a six degree flare or something at the bottom but they do the the 3t thing the super Gaia Gaia's or whatever. So they only flare like mid drop so oh. that your hoods are straight. Right. And so you don't get like this, this weird, like kind of yeah. angle. You don't thing. get the, 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 the weird, yeah. Awkward hands. Uh, so yeah, they do the super Gaia thing basically. So it's not new. Right. Um, but you know, it is a new bar for them. So it's, it's, which I get the concept for an all road bar. Like if I was going to build a, a, all road bike or a, a new road bike, I'd probably want something like this. Yeah. Um, but so it makes sense. It's just, yeah, they're kind of the second people to do the, the mid bend or whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, yeah. Intriguing. Um, it looked nice, you know, yeah. cool. Um, a slightly cool. arrow at the top, you know, for the gains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they didn't go too crazy on the width. Like we're not seeing like 48 yeah. or 52s on these. This is, still kind of a, a foot in the, the, the roadie part of the all road right. camp. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Steve says mid, mid drop flare is nice. I've not, I've not ridden one, but now I'm intrigued. Me either, yeah. yeah, no, it's, <laughs> I, I try to find like, even though super guy is, I found a three T dealer that was local to me and they're like, no, those bars are back ordered for like ever. Forever. You know? So like, no, yeah, no, no one can get them. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I think the concept, completely makes sense for a mixed condition bike emerson here that is awesome i hate weird hood positions <laughs> yeah, so there you go like yeah. uh you know i I've, I've had a pair of wood chippers did not like them ultimately because it, it was weird it was like this you know just See, i like i like the i like the cow chippers the wood the chippers, chippers are, are good or no wait yeah. which one so the cow chippers are what comes on like your cutthroat your wood chippers would okay, be like yeah, what yeah. comes on the Fargo's and like the more mountain 
like yeah. MTB's right. drop market the cow, version. Cow chipper is a blend of the, the cowbell, which was their right. traditional right. cyclocross bar, and, and the wood chipper. Yeah, that that's that's cool. It's the the wood yeah. chippers that are a little wonky. Funky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, cool. Uh, and of course, because it is envy, comes at <laughs> the price. Oh yeah, how um, much is it? Four hundred dollars? Three seventy-five. Hey, Holy smokes, man! Four hundred tax, but if you live in Oregon, right. three seventy-five. Yeah, uh, envy tax. <laughs> yeah, you know what would be funny? Like we were joking around earlier. Like, like these high-end components, you know, that they work with with. They should give you like a virtual avatar of the product. Oh so can, hell yeah! So like rocket I would, at the. I know. would love that. Like if they, yeah, if you if you're buying like a Rafa kit for like four hundred dollars, like oh, you yeah. should. You should be able to have a download like QR or something. Yeah, you going get it and then bam, you're just yeah, there. like that's. I don't know. You know what? All right, everybody. When this happens, <laughs> just hear here first <laughs> and tag us and just be like, "No, ACN needs their money, right? Because that is a great idea as a value I mean, add. It costs so nothing. It it you know they can. I don't know that that would be awesome if I could buy whatever components and then add it to my Zwift avatar. Oh my right. god. Oh yeah, bam. yeah. Hundred percent. That would well, make money yeah. for everybody for Zoya, yeah, right? For the brand, yeah. Probably not for us, but <laughs> you know, we can hope. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So, what should we go? Uh, SimWorks. This is a kind of cool uh, Japanese brand. They do lots of collabs. They did one with uh, Nido recently, and they've got this guy, which is the Half Moon Rack. So this rack goes on the front of your bike. And uh, it's kind of like a, a quasi minimalist front rack. It's in, intended for smaller, like front panniers or mini panniers and a basket. Uh, the top here, it's got a backstop. But it's not like a tombstone, so you can't put a, a rando rack on it, but you can't put like a basket and, and use it as a general support. Um, these are pretty cool. Like I've never, um, I've not, well, I've not used these personally, but I dig these. This kind of gives you height adjustment. Oh, that's cool. So it's got just rack. like a okay, so like a threaded nut, so you can adjust. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Yeah, some racks are you know it's just baked in, and you get what you get, and then you have to get all your adjustment through the the mid fork piece. But this one lets you do some height adjust. Uh, it is kind of interesting how is there a picture of it on the bike? Yep. It's got these two little struts here. Um, yeah, that's cool. So I wonder, like I know most bikes have an external eyelet. I don't know. If yeah. All bikes have a something in on the on the inside part of the fork. I've never started. seen that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've never owned or seen a bike that has the internal. I'm assuming you could flip that thing around. Yeah, and it'd work the same. So it seems like it should work, but like how how it's shown, you know, this is one of those things where, um, you know, always good they, to add one. They had one bike. Yeah, that right it on. Yeah, it it works great on their bike, the Dopo. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> If you've got their bike, you know, perfect compatibility. But it looks, yeah, they're... I mean, you got to be able to flip that thing around because that looks like just a tab. So I'm assuming if you just, like, literally flipped it inside out so the nut is on the inside of the fork, right. that should line up cl close enough. Yeah, unless, like, there's some weirdness that the... Because it's a tubular stay, this one, unless it, like, runs into this kind of vertical um, part of the rack and it you need to offset it more with a washer or something... Um, you know what I'm saying? Because it might. Yeah, look no, I, yeah, I get you. You could, I mean, you could either do washers and a longer bolt, or in in my like experience, like all racks, no matter what you buy, need some finesse, if you will. <laughs> uh, so I, I think, yeah, you would kind of mold it to like make it work. But yeah, you could get a longer bolt and some washers to push that tubular stay out on the outside, if need be, to like hit the fork. And also, that's a steel fork, so it's going to have a little bit, I think, wider you know, stance than, you know, something yeah. else might. I'm curious about these things here. These look like they're Allen bolts. Like these are threaded. Yeah. Somehow. Maybe you can put a, a light or I don't know, something else. Yeah. I don't know what you'd put in that, but yeah. all components will probably make something for that. Right. Oh yeah. Here it is. It's, they have a picture of it. Uh, well, I don't know. Not quite sure if you can unthread those, but, but pretty, pretty cool looking uh, rack there. Uh, what else do we have? Let's go on to shoes. Yep. Um, the so new, new budget. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you have you read up on these? Do you want to talk about it? Uh, so I, I like Giro shoes in general. I have their cylinders, which was, I believe, the original 
mine that I did a review on are the cheapest boa shoes you can get. Um, this is their new like kind of gen of shoe. It's basically got their $150, $175 shoe, like outer, uh, I don't know if you call it an outer sole or just outer skin, whatever you want to call it. You mean like um, this, this it, top, top mesh? Yeah, the top, yeah, top yeah. part. Um, so it's the same external material and mesh to their higher end shoes, but just with a Velcro uh, closure so to bring the price point down. I've always loved Euro shoes. I think they're, you know, a very roomy, um, you know, toe box compared to most. They're a little bit more forgiving as far as width goes and height in the shoe. I always run an insole and I do have uh, inserts for my forefoot um, just for my bike fit. Yeah. So there's a lot of shoes like CDs that are very, that, that aren't very tall. So once you do an insole and anything four foot, you run yeah, out of space. Cramped. Yeah. 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 And so specialized Shimano and Giro, I think have the best toe boxes. Um, the height on those kind of vary between the models, but Giro in general, I've, I've kind of, all their stuff is usually pretty comfy, even with their gloves. Um, yeah. so to bring your price point down with the same tech, I think is really cool. I think that's kind of what they're doing here. Yeah. Um, I kind of like the Velcro, <laughs> you know, I yeah. grew up a, a child of the eighties with lots of Velcro shoes. I'm like, sure. I, sure. Ask Laura. I'm always asking her, why, why aren't there more Velcro shoes in general? <laughs> so I can. <laughs> I can live with these, you know, I don't, I don't need the bows. Uh, I, I have to say of all the colorways, this olive one is the one that speaks to me the most. Yeah. Uh, I do wish that they, in all their product photos, even on their, on the main uh, Jira website, they don't show what the, the, the bottom of the shoe looks like, like how much of this sole there so, is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if it's, if it's anything like my cylinder, which I'm assuming it is, it's it's basically all rubberized. Okay. Um, which is nice. So you get that kind of like if you do miss, you get that midfoot like grip. And know, it's not like hit the pedal. Is it all baked in or is it one of those ones where you can replace them? Because they that, that is the, the, yeah. The Jira Empires, they were replaceable. Right. Uh, That's the thing you get at the nicer shoes. Um but with they also, any, but they also broke quicker, <laughs> which is what right. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that that was the thing is like any typically for most brands, your your replacement heel pads or anything like that are going to be the higher end shoes because it's obviously they can't do one injection molded piece in the bottom. So it's going to add cost. So right. this is the same kind of thing. I have had my Juro cylinders, and they're starting to kind of go. Uh, so I'm going to need a new pair, and it's not even in the heel, which is usually what I wear out. It's like in the forefoot because I been doing more gravel and you're hiking more and whatever, or I'll, I'll, I'll go camping and just bring those as my solo shoe. So I, they're breaking down in the forefoot more. Um, yeah. but I mean, I probably have had them for four years, something like that. So, I mean, I've got, and they're, and again, they're, they're cheaper, Hundred fifty dollars shoe, so that's pretty good. That's, that's, that's good ROI yeah. if, it, if it lasts you that yeah, long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's what I mean. And like, and they probably, yeah, they probably got at least six thousand to ten thousand miles cycling on them, or I don't know, roughly. Right. Um, so I'm just, like, I'm, yeah, I'm just scrolling yeah. down here, like this. This caught my eye. I totally want to try these out. Damn it! These oh yeah, flat pedal shoe with boa. I love this yep. colorway. Um. Yeah, the oh, no, it's not the flat shoe. It's a thingy shoe. It's the one with the thing. Yeah, but you, yeah, I think those have the covers. So oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the so guys, you know, shoes, yeah. <laughs> so you guys in the YouTube comments, what do you guys think of uh, what we've talked about so far? Anything uh, that that we've covered here, you would buy personally? Um, stoked on the Giro or the. Super spendy envy bars. Let us know. Um, I like this one, Kim Rice. I'm back to an all Velcro shoe. Yes. <laughs> um, what else? Okay, Rec Recreation Venturing says looks very similar to the Privateers. Yes, that, I think that's where that was the shoe they kind of copied, trickle down that from. Yeah, uh, I had a pair of uh, the those bright ass orange Terraduros. Oh yeah, one of those. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are pretty good. Um, cool. So we've got a couple, two more handlebar things. Uh, one is from, let's see this one first. This is from whiskey. Oh, yeah. So, uh, QBP house brand, they've mm -hmm. come out with this thing. It's like a moto BMX -y style bar, but it's carbon. <laughs> right. Well, obviously. Yeah. Um, 
pretty interesting eight degrees or 16 degrees of, of back sweep uh, weighs pretty good, you know, 288 grams. Um, and the other bar that they came out with, which is I think a little bit bonkers, is a mustache bar in carbon, which I think is dope. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like the ultimate flex. Right. Like, it's just like, it's like, like, oh, it's in a mustache. Yeah, but it's carbon. Like, right. that's, just, yeah, that's, flex. that's like for your townie bike that you want it to be like 13 pounds, you know? Right. Yeah. Your single speed that you're trying to, you know, flex on your friends with. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I, I wish, I just wish I liked, uh, mustache bars. Uh, I, I tried them before with the red, red lovers, like uh, how the old, um, bridge down, the front. Yeah. How the old bridge yeah. down X01 was set up. And cannot yeah. get on with that hand position. I, if I were to use a bar like this, it would probably be set up with some kind of mountain bike lever instead. Yeah. Uh, but these are pretty sweet. Um, yeah. Did you know, now, are those the the Moto ones? How similar are those to like those Marin bars that you had on that bike? Like, because uh, to me, it looks very similar. I didn't know if those had a sweep or if those were more straight. The the Marins definitely had a sweep. Okay. Uh, they were also probably not 288 grams. Well, yeah, <laughs> obviously, yeah, they're four pounds. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. yeah but this, yeah, that's an interesting point because those bars were on um, the, the Marin Pine Mountain, which was their bike packing bike. And right. a bar like this actually makes an awesome uh, handlebar for, for bike packing because you have that kind of continuous top area to strap things onto. Right. Otherwise, if it didn't have that crossbar, you know, you'd be, one, it would lower the bag. So if you have a smaller frame, your bag's gonna be hitting the tire, and then you're right. really, you know, constrained to that those tiny little edges on either side of the stem. So that um, this would actually make an interesting bike pack. I don't know if they they had that in mind or if 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 this is rated to carry any kind of significant weight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before we tell people yeah. to do that, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, whiskey's gonna call us and be like, "Uh, come on, guys! Like, uh, right. <laughs> it's a, it's a carbon leave. It's like the the Grail bars." So, quick note. If this goes, if we're, I, I'd love Eric to get into this at some point. So even if we got to go a little long, I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. But if we have any extra time, we need to kill a minute. There was this old mash SF video they did with Lance and he had a single speed with mustache bars oh. like through Texas. Right. And he was like ripping through <laughs> the city, like on mustache. And all these guys are on, like drop bar, like njs fixies like all like right. you know thinking they're hot and just just lance on his mustache bar just ripping through it was it was great so he would have he would have loved this but um the other thing with the grail bars i don't know if anybody saw it but on the vegan cyclist he did a vlog i think today he put a box of like a pizza box like between the two layers to like carry it home and i was like that is the best application for those bars i have ever seen right i'll pull, will pull it up while we're looking through comments because it was it was great um, yeah, the, the grail bars, those, the, the double deckers. Double deckers. Yeah. The double yeah. deckers. It was amazing. I want to uh, pull this up. Hang on. So let's see. Alex says originate has something similar to alloy. Yes. I, I think I've seen those. Um, uh, while well, we're taking questions here, any suggestions for cheap clip on fender slash fender like stuff? Uh, so two, two clip on fenders that I like one is the, uh, toe peak D fender. You can tell that they're funny pun there. And that's made for a 29 er, which is nice because I've, I've run that everything from a, a gravel bike, a road bike, a mountain bike, and even a fat bike. And that's pretty good coverage. And you can really articulate the arm. Uh, another fender, it doesn't clip on, but it does attach to your frame is the ass savers. Um, yes. their uh, adventure version of their, 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 their fender. And what's cool about that is that it actually goes through the triangle of um, your seat stays and connects to your down tube. So it doesn't connect to your seat post. And why right. that's cool is like, if you run a rear bag, you can still have a fender because it's not competing uh, with that, that space on the seat tube. Uh, I, should, I should make a video about that, but <laughs> so let's, let's see here. I got the, you find it? yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a be, it's the best application for the double the, the upper nice. bar i've ever seen well, it was great we add that there, there it is go. yeah <laughs> like it, it's the it's the it completely makes sense now like i have no no ill to say about the the hover bar because it's the best pizza delivery system you can get without they, having to get a bathroom 
they should they they should just make a, a bag or or something that that that's some kind that. of clip on carbon like rail oh, system yeah. that holds a standard pizza box like out front just to just so it doesn't slide forward when you're braking you know yeah on your gravel sense yeah 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 and envy, envy could make one and uh, oh, for sure yeah. and and charge yeah, exactly. a, and charge a couple of dollars <laughs> <laughs> And what would be rad is if you, you know, bought that and could have it on your Zwift avatar, just like oh, a little, yeah. oh, little pizza box. Bam. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then your, your avatar could grab on the end of the pizza box for like more air. While you're eating pizza, just drop yeah. in the water. <laughs> yeah. just, we're just, we're just a money making machine right now. These are just like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay. Uh, another interesting handlebar, not yet in reality, still virtual. You can tell because it's rendering. Uh, Shell Money from uh, Money Bikes is trying to fund his carbon riser bar dubbed the light bar. Um, it just looks like, the, looks like the whiskey bar. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I feel <laughs> like I don't know who stole whose thunder. Like if maybe, you know, wh whatever is going on. They are uh -huh. admittedly a little bit different. Uh, 827 wide, 12 degrees of back sweep. The okay. whiskey is uh, two millimeters Six shorter. <laughs> Okay. And uh, has uh, four four degrees more of uh, back sweep, so you got can it. get granular if if you want here. Yes, but yes, it is it, it is similar ish, let's say. Um, and yeah, so you know you can you can buy the whiskey stuff now. You can help. Uh, you can support uh, money shell money, uh, and get this bar made. I think he's doing a a pre-order or a uh, pre-sale on his website because it does, does cost a lot of money. It uh, turns out to, to make a carbon handlebar. <laughs> oh yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, what else? And our last topic um, is uh, breezer. They've come out with some pretty cool bikes. Uh, the ones that we were looking at specifically to talk about was the thunder uh, at 1500 bucks. What do you get here? Uh, view bike. They also just updated their website, so uh, th some things may be broken. <laughs> uh, one by twelve, uh, thirty-four in the front, ten to fifty-one in the rear. So nice big wide speed uh, hydraulic disc brakes. Looks like is that a dropper post? Mm. Uh, on the th that the Thunder, I believe if you get the Pro version, it comes with the dropper. I could be wrong. Yeah, some pretty decently fat meat. And uh, twenty nine by two point five, and yeah, what what do you like about this bike? Uh, I I just think it's cool. I mean, I think it brings the price point down because obviously you don't have a suspension fork, and you can obviously like grow into that, um, right. which I think is kind of like a cool stepping stone. And obviously with the rigid fork, like you have more mounting options and and versatility as far as like you know if you want to use it as kind of a bike packing bike. Yeah. Um, I think they should offer a suspension version out of the box. You know, obviously they're going to charge more for it. I think that's totally makes sense. Right. Um, but basically you get everything else um, besides that. I mean, you get a good group set. You get the one by 12 Dior. So you get the the big new 12 speed range, mm -hmm. um, which is nice. So I think somebody who, you know, for like my area and my skill set, uh, would a suspension fork definitely aid in that hundred percent. But if I was, you know, wanting something that was more bike packing friendly, uh, this would be a great stepping stone. And then if I wanted something that was more mountain friendly, if I'm not bike backing for the season or whatever it is, you know, swap out the fork and you got a killer steel mountain bike. So I think, I think that's a, a nice middle ground to where you can play that kind of Legos game with it, essentially kind of make it what you want when you need it. Yeah. Um, Cause I think a lot of people find it hard to find a rigid fork to make their mountain bike bike packable. So I think that the other ver the other direction is easier in my opinion. That's for sure. Um, I'm bringing up the Marin site because they, as you were talking, it reminded me of uh, a couple of interesting bikes that they've that they're coming out with. I don't know if they're on their site yet. Um, so this one, they're coming out with a DSX. Uh, kind of in a similar-ish vein, so fully mm -hmm. rigid, but it's their their version of the flat bar gravel bike, and it actually looks right. pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally totally ride that. Um, uh, aluminum frame, carbon fork, so it's gonna be a little bit lighter. 
than the Pine Mountain that I tested. Um, intended for you know kind of being a utility bike, but also giving people that that flat flat bar gravel option. Yeah, that's what I'm. I want to do. I'm working with Poseidon to try to do that with the Redwood, uh, mm -hmm. since they don't offer a flat bar version of that yet. Um, is doing a flat bar conversion on that bike just to kind of gauge interest and see how it kind of changes the bike up. Yeah. Um, because I did have, uh, let me, I gotta, I gotta shout him out. Cause he, he did do me a solid, um, on Instagram here. Uh, Dyna mighty 16. Uh, <laughs> he put, he put 2.6s on his Redwood and he had clearance. Oh, really? fork. He, He's gonna okay. send me a yeah. He's gonna send me a picture of the rear, um, but I'm I'm gonna spec. I'm gonna totally up like if I flat bar thing like flat bar that thing. I want right. to do two point six flat bar, um, probably a redwood or a redshift uh, suspension stem, and just see how that thing is as like a rigid mountain bike kind of conversion. Right. Um, and then I lucked out because I didn't think it would work. Is but Marin has it on their Gestalt. I think is what they that what you call it. Mm -hmm. They have the same Advent X rear derailleur with an 1151. Oh, really? Sunrise. Oh, and, and I was like, there's not enough B limit for that. And then I saw theirs. I was like, well, it's got to work. For so sure. So that's like, that's like the, the goal for that bike. And then I might, I might do a crazy paint job slash setup on that thing. But, anyways, uh, that's. that's <clears throat> that is one yeah. thing I do like about Marin. Like, they, they have interesting drivetrains. Like, the Nikasi yeah. I tested. It was nine speed and eleven forty eight. So it had yeah. a cassette that you could only get OEM. Uh, I don't know if Sunrise came out with that aftermarket, but uh, it's pretty interesting. I just saw a really funny comment here: uh, Marin copying Poseidon Redwood Triangle. Oh yeah, but see, uh, they put it somewhere else for the patent issues. Yeah, the, the, right, guys, the smallest. So this, is, this is the next uh, big trend in the bike industry right here: the tiny, Small tiny bags. <laughs> Put your, to put your drugs. Um, yeah, well, I would have put I would have put my ibuprofen in there if I would have carried it during my crash <laughs> after my crash. Yeah, that's what I would have put it. <laughs> I think w one cool thing about this bike, you know, again, uh, super reasonably priced, thousand bucks get gets you a, a pretty interesting looking bike. Um, I'm curious what it weighs on the scales. My guess would probably be mid twenties, but yeah. um, you know, not, not bad. I mean, for for the money, uh, they did have one other bike that I'm hoping to review next um, next riding season. I can find it here. Uh, where are you? It's gotta be the step through. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna look it up because I've been... It's this one. I totally wanna ride I that. Called it, I called it step through, yeah. I totally wanna ride that. It's got a much larger uh, small triangle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can get a mid-sized triangle bag. Oh no, they've got two, so you can do like a mini. Yeah, with like a built-in fender, and then yeah, you have the yeah. That okay. This is crying for a bag that looks like a pizza slice. Sure. <laughs> like you just yeah. want to yeah. slap one in there. Um, yeah. So this is. I mean, look at this. It's 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 got you know that kind of mixy look, but it's yeah. got massive gears and huge tires. Uh, this bike just looks like it would be a ride. It's like 700 bucks. Yeah. I mean, this is, this bike looks like a ride for the money. Um, yeah, I, I want to, I have a, like a beater bike that I've had outside that I like, I'm going to strip the paint off of cause it's super rusted out and I want to rebuild it with like eight speed micro shift wide range. Cause yeah. in my head, all <laughs> hybrids and all dad bikes <laughs> like, should be one by eight speed. Like that's it. Like get your mega range on there so you can carry the trailer. You right. can put the basket on there. You can carry whatever, call them dad and mom bikes, you know, not trying to, you know, exclude anyone, but right. yeah, like everything should be one by for a hybrid. Like I don't get what the, the holdup is and price point with micro shift, like you can't do it. So I want to rebuild mine to do something like this, like mega range, right. you know, it won't clear that kind of big tire, but like, that's, that's what I think. Uh, yeah, that's the, the new, the new, new should be all that. Yeah. I mean, if this is, if th this sets the bar for, you know, hybrid bikes or like affordable bikes. I'm totally okay yeah. with that. I think this is yeah. super cool for, for the money and, you know, it's got appropriate gearing for probably the, the intended user. Um, right. and it just looks hella fun. Like, uh, I want to, I want to get this and take, take it on the, on the gravel roads here in Montana. Cause I think it would just be oh, an yeah. absolute riot. <laughs> yeah.
Um, all right. So, so, guys, we, so take some questions. Yeah, let's do questions. Uh, if you guys have questions in the comments, I'm going to, I, I would re if you had a question before reiterate it because we probably are going to lose it if it's like deep back in there. So yeah. retype people if uh, you think it's important. Yeah. Retype your question and we will, uh, bring it up. So let's see. Here in the meantime, we can, oh, if we got, if we got people in the meantime, I, let me screen share this for my, uh, the mustache bar with Lance. Hang on. There we go. All right. So if you look, there's Lance. Hey, and he's, got, you're right. <laughs> he's just like, he's got a mustache bar just, just ripping on these guys. They're like, you know, can you pause just, it? Pause it. Oh, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> let me get a good screen. It, it's all, it's also like 240p. There it is. Nice. So that's yeah, must yeah. like way far out there. Oh yeah, <laughs> all all the Nash SF guys. So for all you like fixed gear, like single speed lovers, like this is <laughs> when is this two thousand eight? This has probably been re-uploaded since then. But yeah, it's it's awful quality. But right. he like rode with them in Texas or something, like running reds. Like no, it, he's in like Nikes and yeah. like a white tee. Yeah, the police came. Obviously, he's like, hey, I'm Lance. He's on, he's uh, on flat. He's on flat. Yeah, he's no, to me, yeah, he's on flat. I don't know, like. <laughs> But just just mobbing on everybody. It was great. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah that's pretty sweet. Uh, that, that definitely looks like Austin. I think that's like Congress Street uh, or South Congress, maybe. I don't know. Nice. Yeah, in like his baggy like cargo pants. It's great. Like just, no helmet, just whatever. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, sorry. I had to share that with the mustache bars. That just felt appropriate. This was Lance uh, before he was stripped of uh, all the titles, right? Yeah, yeah. He was, I think he was probably still doping. That's probably why he was fine in his Nikes. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. Um. So racer here has a tech question. I'm running Barcon shifters the first time. Can I run the cables along the bars until they exit? Yes, you can. Uh, you just have to use. Uh, I, I think Steve mentioned this. I did the cave of bad ideas showing that routing. You will need to use a um, a tandem length uh, rear cable because it's hella long. If you run it that way, and it like a standard rear cable is not going to do it, you have to get like an extra long tandem length one. That is the only uh, caveat with that routing system. Otherwise, it, it shifts fine, makes it super clean. If you don't like the the big loopy loop thing, um, have you have you ever used bar and shifters or just not your, uh, not your jam on a TV bike? Uh, <laughs> 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 I've yeah. used both styles. Have you ever used the SRAM ones? Uh, uh, uh I've only used okay. the, how are they different? Those are, they're for TT, but they're, they're super weird, but I, I like them. They're really hard to shift, but <laughs> what they did was, I think this was during 10 speed, if I can remember right. So they auto center. So you oh. click down and it's like a sequential. So like it, like you click down and it auto goes to the middle. You oh, click okay. up, it goes to the middle. So you can like pop, 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 you know, and like it. So you're not trying to do the whole like, right? I, like, I you yeah, probably have the can. finesse over the years of like what finger to use if you want to shift the whole thing. I can't do that, but like it was cool because you could just like sit there and just do this, like right. you know, right. and you would shift up and down. They were very difficult to shift that way. Huh. Uh, but I was like, oh, that'd be a cool bar end because you could just like kind of like you know, wow. do this like, yeah. yeah. So maybe, maybe for another, you know, if you run out of ideas, try to get some old 10 speed. I don't know what they called them, but they were, uh, I think they were, sh they might've been the SRAM red versions only, but they were like a bar and shifter that SRAM made for their TT stuff that, like I said, like auto centered every shift. Right. Um, that's cool. I, I didn't know that those existed or those worked. Uh, I don't know if they work, but you know, <laughs> RTC. Return to center. There it is. Yeah. 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 So Jason brings up a question here. Have you guys seen the new uh, bag? Yes. From... I'll bring that up. That's yep. That's kind of that is the coolest. I I definitely am all about it. And it makes me want to get another cycling computer because it won't mount to the, the Garmin mount on the top. Because <laughs> I have so, a design. What's special about this? It's just got the built-in thingy. So it's got so it's got a very minimalistic, like quick release rack uh to the handlebar, which is cool. Yeah. Um, it has the Garmin or quad lock or Wahoo mount or whatever for the top yeah. uh, there. If you look to the sides, there's actually two screw in mounts for um, I don't know what Paul calls them, but they basically like they the, the ones that flare out to like your standard clamp size. Mm. 
Um, you can do them for the fork if you want to run like a, a a light, like real low on one of your fork pack mounts or your fender mount. Oh, like the the Gino Gino mount. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they have two of those on both sides. You can run like a bell and a, and a headlight and still run your Garmin or computer in the middle of the bag. Um, both of the side pockets um, are bungee style. So you can like add stuff in there. And then if you see the bungee cord underneath, yeah. that actually like extends into like a shoulder strap. Ah. Then on the inside, they have like a bunch of different compartments. So you can, you know, obviously carbon pen, uh, like add different things and, you know, segment everything. So it's easy to get to. Right. And it flips open, obviously outwards, so you don't, um, right, so you don't lose anything. As yeah. well as they built it. If you watch the video, they built everything to where it's all replaceable. So if you wear out, like your bungees get worn out, all of that is something you can buy from them and relace. Um, it's all kind of modular, so right. you could change the innards to where they they said they want to come out with like a camera specific one for like you know the soft bags. You can hold like a, a small yeah. mirrorless in there or whatever. Um, and or like orange. I said, the seg- <laughs> or, yeah, or an orange or, an or- a full size naval orange. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's so like the segmented pox in the front, like he's putting his phone in. So you can have stuff that's like, you know, easier to get to instead of fumbling around. Yeah. Um, you know, it looks pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of like the hard mount in the front, but if you, I think if you scroll on, there might be the gif of there's like a red lever underneath. Oh yeah. For the next one, the easy on and off. Yeah. Um, I like that, that it's toolless. Yeah, to, to sure. easily remove it, you know, so it's not super garish out there. And because it has the computer mount on there, you're not worried about your front mount being like an issue or having to go to like a stem mount. Right. So I like that they integrated that into the the top of the shell. Yeah. Um, so it's obviously it's not huge, but it's going to work on kind of every size handlebar. Yeah. Um, so you, you know, what's yeah. funny about this thing, this this thing in particular, like I have this problem pretty often. I have lots of like a uh, random newer style bags and usually mm-hmm. there's a vinyl map case. Right. I don't really use a, a map yeah. anymore for navigation. Yeah. So what I ended up doing was I bought um, what's it called? You can you know the you know when you have a pocket knife, it's got like a metal spring clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought like I had to buy them like a, a five pack of them, but I bought like a metal spring clip, and I took a Wahoo mount and I used Sugru and put it on there. So now like I can literally just like clip it onto any vinyl uh, random sure. bag. Or even like a, a caradice, I'll just go over the like I should. Right. I, I, I intended to make a video about it. I should make one because I, I feel like it would be timely for, for something like this. Yeah. <laughs> so this is like a little bit nicer than that, but yeah. Like, yeah. Nicer. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that I could successfully raise. How much did they raise? In, I think, in they, I think they hit gold in like thirty minutes or something oh, ridiculous. Really? I think it's a super smart idea. I mean, I I'm totally into it. Like I oh, I think yeah. it's the quad it's lock good. yeah integration like it. Cool. They they really thought it out well. Like this is one of the few that didn't miss. I mean, they had to go the size they went with makes sense because they want to make it with with every handlebar width. Right. So you can't go too big. But I think this is a great like every day, you know. Yeah. And it it and it's so functional. Like you're not gonna want to take it off because of some right. kind of clearance issue or whatever. I do like um, how the way it mounts that yeah. it doesn't like the height of it doesn't extend above the handlebars. Right. I feel like there are many handlebar bags that place the mount in the, the center and it just makes it so high. It affects right. the steering and it just gets in the way. So this is nice and flush. Yeah. Is good kind of application there. Uh, yeah, they raise like ridiculous amount of money. If you click the pre-order now, it should take you to the Kickstarter. Let's see what they did. Holy smoke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they want I think they wanted like like 60 or like 60 grand or something like that. Right. Yeah, and, and it, they got 6 days left. Yeah, I'm they're good. Uh, yeah, yeah, they did well. Yeah. yeah. Think, we should we should totally kickstarter something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kickstarter that uh my my uh, Garmin knife clip. There it is. Uh or no, can we just kickstarter us talking about the Zwift idea? Right. <laughs> just be like, hey, everybody support us because we're, we're all like poor, starving YouTubers and we all need money to eat. Like, right. <laughs> it's just that we can afford to like all take a plane to like a headquarters somewhere and pitch us to like a major company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's see. Uh, uh, so, what's here? All right. Well, congrats on uh, ordering a, a, a breadwinner B Road. Um, uh, awesome bike. Laura loves hers, and we're actually going to do um, uh, a collab with Sugar Wheelworks. 
uh, trying to iron that out. Like uh, we always get asked, like, I don't know if you, you get the same question, Mike, but like what's, what wheel set should, should people buy if they want to upgrade? Sure. Um, so just kind of specking out a nice, like, uh, price value weight wheel. Yeah. I just got, so to <clears throat> kind of riff off of that a little bit, like I started a live stream like two weeks ago that we did when we didn't have a, a ACN of working with Varco cycles. Um, he just moved back to California. He's very affordable, does amazing steel work, um, for like a custom build for him to show people like, these are the things kind of like yours, like things to ask and things like that. Right. But I just got a wheel set in that I'm hyped about that. I'm sad that I can't ride for a few weeks because of my <laughs> shoulder um scribe <clears throat> wheels <laughs> uh i just got a set they're that from is. the uk i'm just gonna hit you with some stats everybody <laughs> these are their gravel wheels they call them the wide plus pluses <laughs> 25 internal 30 external in 700c 1318 grams what at a retail price of a thousand dollars even Wait, which which one is it? Is it road? You said grab, gravel. Go to grab grab, and uh, then go to the wide plus plus. Wide plus plus. Damn, yeah, that's, that's the one. That's yeah. stupid light. Stupid light. Wow. With and the... super, super wide hookless, yeah. like all everything, like and the and the 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 hub is ridiculous. It, I don't know if it states on there with the ratchet. It feels like that fifty four tooth DT Swiss. Right. So it's um, super high I mean, engagement. Yeah. I mean, just it, it's obnoxious, but I love it. Um, cause when you coast, people think you're, it's almost like ringing a bell when you're behind people. Cause they look back, they're like, Oh, <laughs> like whatever. So it's super cool. Or if yeah. you pedal backwards, it's even louder. It's, it's great. Um, but they offer it in every hub style that you want. It only does come center lock, which I, I prefer six bolt. Um, but they do set you a set of adapters. You get extra spokes. What, um, why, do you like, why, do you like, why do you like six bolt over center lock? I just find it's easier tight. to adjust. Really? Like how much, is, uh, like, what are you adjusting? Like once it's on? Uh, the... No. So for, for me, if you watch the video of like how to swap any wheel set, uh, I saw that like with the little space. Yeah. Thingy. yeah okay. So like that's, it's way easier and there's way more adjustment with six bolt than there is with center lock center lock, depending on the, the rotor that you get, everybody's kind of got their own spacing right. and, you can only do so much with shims as far as center lock goes with six bolt. You see how many threads you have on the inside of a six bolt rotor. Yeah. You know, you have tons of room. You could do five shims and space it out like, you know, whatever. Right. So if you're trying to make multiple wheel sets work, it's a lot easier to, and it, it is cheaper for the rotors as far as financially, like center lock, decent rotors are a lot more money than like a decent six bolt. Yeah. Um, but besides that, as far as adjustment factor, if you're trying to make one bike and multiple wheel sets work, six bolt is easier to work with. So I, like I said in that video, get your center lock wheels to work. And then if you have a six bolt set, and like adjust those. That. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah I, I, because I prefer, I prefer center lock because, you know, back when you know, we could travel and fly, like I'd right. take the yeah. rotors off and. Oh I, yeah. It's, it was, it's easier. It yeah. is quicker in that regard. And I, that is the beauty of it. And that's why initially all my wheels were center lock. Right. But after getting like multiple different brands and different hubs and all that, I was like, oh, six bolts so much easier to work with. Yeah. As far as like a multi wheel set bike, it's again, get your center lock wheels that you like, set it to that, and then adjust everything to that setup. It's way easier. Um, but if I could redo like the Industry 9 650s that I have, yeah. I would have bought them six bolt knowing what I know now. Right. Um, so I, I, I don't know if you, you mentioned this or not. So did you get to ride these before you crash or are these the wheels? I rode them. At, those were the wheels that were on the bike as oh, I crashed. No. Uh, <laughs> they rode, you know, they, hey, you know what? They spin still true as hell and held all the air. So uh, those, I, it was a road crash. So it's not like they, I mean, I hit the ground and basically my body took most of it. Right. But. Um, I had the like, 15... oh, crap the wheels. <laughs> yeah, no, basically I was like, screw my shoulder. I don't have insurance, but I, I think I'll heal. Like it's fine. Yeah. Uh, carbon doesn't, you know, grow back. So, uh, no, honestly, the engagement was super fast. I did test ride them prior and rode them a little bit. Um, they, and I rode them with like 50 C's and I was with a bunch of guys who were on like 28 C, like all road bikes. And I held up fine. Like the profile. Are these uh, the last wheels you've ever ridden on? In 700, yes. 
how how would you describe like going from a regular wheel set to, to something this light so it was it was difficult to say because i rode them on the the venture 50 c's which are not a super light tire right, right. um i if i rode them on like 38 c like gravel king slicks i would have felt like i was flying <laughs> uh the my whiskey carbon rims that i had built those are i believe 14 ish 14 25 14 50 um so these being a whole 100 grams lighter with that same tire set would feel i probably notice it yeah. the main thing with these are the engagement so i understand like hunt they do a very fast engagement hub on their 650s and they do the slower ratcheting on their road because i did definitely feel these decelerate faster so you hmm. let off the gas and you like that quick engagement does slow the wheels down quicker as far as the rear goes okay so you do notice that on the road right. once you're once you coast like if you're pedaling it's whatever it's just when you coast down right um that engagement isn't in your favor at that point um yeah. the hoops feeling like this ideally what i'm looking for right now and i am talking to pan racer is i'm trying to get some 29 or by 2.1 tires for those wheels to run on the redwood because mm -hmm. that bike is so heavy and those wheels are literally like the front wheel i think weighs like 1500 grams with the tire on it or something oh, like right. that so like these would be like like <laughs> you know ridiculously lighter so i yeah. want to see what the feel is because like i said in my video i noticed my heart rate was just higher for like the similar i do similar routes for all my reviews so i can have some right. consistency and and just like you do you have your your loop that you yeah. you know that we always see so same kind of thing. I just noticed that to where the rotational weight, which I think it was GCN did something about like scientifically, like that doesn't matter. I'm like, dude, you feel that it's like ankle weights right. on. <laughs> like I'm right. I rode, I rode the redwood with my buddy Mario on the same, like a flat route. We're doing like 16 miles an hour. I'm like, right. why is my heart rate like 170 right now? Like we're doing like 15 miles an hour. And he's like, dude, I'm doing like 120 heart rate. What are you talking about? I'm like, <sighs> why? <laughs> oh my god like what is going yeah. on that's the only difference was just the overall like wheel weight because the bike whatever and the flats yeah. it doesn't matter which it's rotational i'm like right. they're bullshit at this point i was like this is <laughs> something you feel it just right. feels like i have heavy ankle weights on and I'm trying to run a mile like you're, you're gonna notice it so yeah. um i do want to do a video once i can get a, a bigger tire for that um to see the difference because i think you know you've done similar videos and I, I kind of want to do one. I'm just like, okay, do you do, do you do, you know, $2,000 budget and where do you put the money? And is it the $500 wheel set or is it a thousand dollar wheels and the thousand dollar bike? You know what I mean? So like, what's, what's going to yeah. make it worth it. Um, and so that's the, the goal when I can physically ride again. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah my, those wheels are killer. Yeah. I've been super happy yeah. with them. Yeah. In my, you know, I, I probably, you know, I still have limited data points in terms of, of wheel sets, but I have tried some really light ones, and I think they're like a game changer. Like I put, yeah. I put some carbon wheels on. Do you remember the Aventon Quixote? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I used to low, low, low key work there, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> anyone who's watching this late, late, uh, it was like a, a different. I even put on um back when Specialized had the Sequoia. You know, they're they're known for yeah. like the heavy wheels, and again, that that yeah, transforms. Yeah, I think I think for me, like that's why I don't think that that like GCM video like did people justice because like realistically, like I still believe in the one to three ratio. Like one, whatever weight you save in the wheels is compounded by three overall weight. So if you save a pound in the frame versus a pound in the wheels, a pound in the wheels is gonna feel like a huge difference for sure. in comparison. So yeah, I, I yeah. feel like when people buy bikes. Um, like new bikes, they get distracted by the componentry that's hanging on the frame, but they never think of the wheels. Right. You know, they see, like, oh, you know, it's got, you know, Durace or Altegra or whatever, XT. Yeah. Um, and they base the quality of, of the bike and, and how it's going to ride on those components, which are important. But right. then a lot of bikes, I feel like until you get into the four or $5,000 mark are, are going to have the same kind of mid-range. Yeah, you know? So. Yeah, I tell everybody, like, rotational weight, like, if you watched my monster gravel, like bike build, I built in its most rigid and lightweight form in 650 B. Uh, it was, I think 18 pounds with a carbon seat post and a rigid stem with 650 B by two point twos. 
And I told, I told, I told everyone, I'm like, yeah, I have apex shifters and derailleur on that thing. Like, it's not like I said, rotational weight is all that matters. So if all right. the weight and money you're going to save is in the cassette and the crank set for that group set, yeah. I said, yes, four shifters are a whole 30 grams lighter and they're $250 more money. Right. Derailleur, derailleur, it's 40 grams heavier, right? but it's $200 cheaper. Like, it's just like, yeah. but I can save 300 grams in the crank set for like eighty dollars more you know right. it, like so that's that's really where you know you spend the money where it makes sense you look at the weight differences and you've said the same thing it's just like yeah your stock cassette versus a like your garbrook one that thing is like dumb light yeah uh you know it it's ridiculous how much lighter it is yes it adds to overall but it's also weight that you're moving right. so it's gonna feel even more so than that right um you know so that's where I tell people like, if you're going to save some weight, don't do it in the, the bars, do it right. in the crank <laughs> or your pedals. Yeah. You know, like your pedals, you can save a ton in yeah. and you, do I have carbon bars on my bike? Yeah. But like, it's, it's like, if I was going to spend that money, like it'd be somewhere else if I needed it to be, you know? Yeah. So I, I've, I've done a couple of videos recently on uh, searching for like the minimum minimalist flat pedal shoe. Yeah. I, I saw that. I think it's the same thing like if you think of like any kind of flat pedal specific shoe that's out there it's usually a mountain bike shoe and they're yeah. usually really heavy and one of the you know, early comments that you would typically typically expect it's like well why do you care so much about the weight in the shoe when you have all this heavy stuff on your bike it's like because i'm constantly moving my foot up and down you know if yeah. there's any place i want to drop weight you know it's going to be you know in, in something that's attached directly to my body yeah, no, I, I completely agree to that. Like where, like if anybody says that, it'd be like, wear a pair of like boots Oh yeah, and then go put some Nike airs on. Like, yeah. it feels like you have nothing. Like right. it's, it's, it's a hundred percent. It's, it's weight that you have to physically move if it's the wheels or if it's your feet, lifting them up and then putting them down. Right. Like it, I, I watched that. That was, it was super cool. Like that was something that I remember I found some old pair of like Adidas cycling shoes at like a Goodwill once. And I kept yeah. them for a while because they were like nostalgic, but they had a stiff sole lace up, but they were for standard toe clips. Cause like right. that was all you had. There was before clip-ins or whatever. And that was what they were designed for. And they even had like uh perpendicular slots in them to like grab onto the toe clip to like oh, grip cool. it. Like, yeah. You know, super. It was, I was like, Oh, this is trick. Like right. I used them when I rode fixed gear for a while, like, you yeah. know, for some swag. And then I was like, ah, I can't ride these anymore. I want to keep them nice, <laughs> you know? And then, uh, but yeah, it's just like it, any kind of, I mean, if you look at anybody or any serious racer, it's why they put, you know, road pedals on their gravel bike because they like, well, if I don't have to dismount and I can save half a pound yeah. over a 130 mile race, that's right. a huge amount of like right. wattage or, you know, savings as far as like effort level that they're get to get to keep. Yeah. It's or huge. even, you know, to some extent, like the, you know, like the road shoes that use like a knit mesh. Yeah. Instead of like some kind of rubber TPU. It's just, you know, they're, they're cutting weight there. I'd love to see yeah. that like, applied to, you know, like a flat pedal that's not a mountain bike. I mean, it's probably too much of a, of a niche, but I yeah. think it's, it's interesting, you know, so my, my, my search continues. There's the Kickstarter right there. Some, right. some, there knit, some, knit, some, some knit Crocs. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I want some knit flat pedal gravel shoes that are ultralight, lighter than any uh, stiff carbon uh, road shoe. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so they have, yeah, they have to be lighter and stiffer than like what? What are those, uh, the new S Works SL sub sixes or sub sevens or whatever the new new gen is? Uh, the arrow lights it's like just just like a mesh like carbon panel on the top they're like dumb light uh yeah it's gonna be like that but it's you gotta be able to ride it flat and hooked in so what is it fully 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 locked what's the the croc term uh croc watts <laughs> okay there, croc watts. there it is yeah <laughs> you know what's funny is like since i've been right like everyone in on my on the papless spelled instagram people just dm me anything croc related <laughs> <laughs> like it's seriously great. like i look at the messages half of them have like hey check out these this like wacky thing someone's doing on, with crocs Some, so. yeah somebody i saw somebody i think my buddy aaron posted today was like it was like somebody like photoshopped like uh, a new s work shoe with a croc so it had the dual boas like on the front <laughs> or something like that yeah. like it looked it looked really good but like it was just like hell yeah yeah, yeah it was good uh so we're at 120 here uh, eric's not not uh not making it today 
Yeah. So if you guys missed out, um, Eric got fired. Uh, so <laughs> if, no, he's uh, he's pulling night shift. He's doing some uh, some production work in a uh, in trying to his life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, make, making the, making the real video dollars, not this yeah. YouTube <laughs> BS. Uh, so that's why he couldn't make it. Uh, we were hoping that he could pop on, but it's a little late. So yeah, we, we, we try to we try eked it out as long as we could. And it's official. Uh, the 6160 All Roads sold out and all completes in just over 24 hours. Dang, that's baller. So yeah, yeah they did a good job. Yep. Cool. Uh, well, I'm going to take it home then. Are you okay with that? Yep. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. If uh, there's 144 of you that, that have stuck around for an hour and 20 minutes, which is pretty dang impressive. Uh, before you log off, because I know that's what you're about to do, give the video a <laughs> thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up now, yep. <laughs> and then you can log off. But we. <laughs> oh, uh, even your even your monitor behind you turned off. That's how long we've been doing this. <laughs> like screw this, I'm going home. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thanks everyone for for joining us. Uh, hope, hopefully you enjoyed the show. We covered a lot of product, answered some some questions, uh, came up with some uh, fun Kickstarter ideas. And next week, that is when we're going to be doing the group review of the Poseidon Redwood. Right? That's that's what's happening. That's the, the goal, unless Eric has to unfortunately work again uh, and doesn't have the completely open schedule like I do, AKA doing nothing. Uh, right. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> doing nothing and injured. <laughs> yeah, doing nothing and injured and still trying to make YouTube videos. So yeah, that's uh yeah. You can hear more about my crash tomorrow. Everybody subscribe. <laughs> yeah, every, if you're not subscribed to Locked In, uh, do that. Give and it buy a t-shirt so I can, I can pay for the drugs, the pain medication that I have to right. take. <laughs> So you've got many calls calls to action, people. Yes, uh, yes, sorry, exactly. Sorry to overload you. But thanks for sticking around. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. And until next time, keep bikes weird.